Hi, everybody. It's meteorologist Joe Chaffee. As we uh, watch the warm sector set up now over the mid-Atlantic states, uh, back over into the middle Mississippi Valley, a lot of uh, 60s and 70s already showing up as this uh, low pressure center heads up toward the Great Lakes. And you're seeing the uh, evolution of what will be another round of severe weather uh, that will uh, develop later today. And then again on Wednesday when it moves into the Northeast and mid-Atlantic states, and we get into some record high temperatures. Now, here's the severe weather threat for today, as envisioned by the Storm Prediction Center of the National Weather Service. And it's got an enhanced risk area from northern Arkansas through most of Missouri, uh, Illinois, into Indiana. Slight risk uh, into uh, Ohio, um, cuts Kentucky on a diagonal, western Tennessee, the rest of Arkansas down to the southern part of the state, eastern Oklahoma and extreme eastern Kansas. And you've got marginal risk outlining that particular area into western Pennsylvania. Now from here, we go to Wednesday where everything is going to shift to the east coast. And the Storm Prediction Center has actually expanded the area northward. I, I, I mentioned this yesterday and I thought there was a pretty good chance that uh, the uh, slight risk area will be would be pushed up uh, into uh, southeastern parts of southeastern New York State. And indeed, they, they moved it up into the Catskills. And uh, the marginal risk area goes all the way up into the southern Adirondacks and includes pretty much all of Connecticut and Long Island, as well as most of uh, central and western Massachusetts. General thunderstorm activity forecast is possible elsewhere in New England. And you can see the enhanced risk from West Virginia down into northern Alabama and Mississippi. This is a really large area for uh, of risk for this time of year. I, I honestly, I, I you know, I I, I want to say that uh, this is the first time I've seen it. The problem is that over years, you know, you've seen so many events over so many months that you do tend to forget. So um, at least as far as my memory goes, I thought that we hadn't seen something like this in a while. And then somebody reminded me that we had a severe, or an early severe weather event last February. And then someone else reminded me that uh, we had similar things going on at the uh, end of um, February uh, 2000 into March 2012, which was uh, coming out of a, um, I believe that was the 1112 El Nino. So I don't know. You know, you remember these things and then you don't. But it does look pretty impressive no matter what. So let's take a look at what could happen here with regards to uh, today. You see the, uh, the NAM produces some downpours and thunderstorms uh, in uh, the area where we have the enhanced risk. There isn't really a, a huge um, line that forms here uh, going into this evening. And then we start to see uh, more activity back through Missouri uh, and in through Illinois. So it's from here. Uh, later this evening that will probably and overnight that will probably see some severe weather the other issue is that when the uh, downpours that are developing now in parts of the ohio valley that's going to move through uh, our this this area here eastern pennsylvania new jersey and long island uh, late later this evening and into the first part of tonight and i think there could be a thunderstorm or two embedded in that uh the warm uh with the warm front going by and sometimes those those warm front thunderstorms can be a lot of fun. A lot of they tend to have a lot of lightning in them, and uh, they also tend to produce some very heavy rains over an incredibly short period of time. So then we get into the daytime Wednesday when we're completely warm sectored here in the Northeast, and you can see that the, there's a lot of convective activity going on south of the low center. You've got snow actually back up through a, a good chunk of Wisconsin, southeastern Minnesota, Iowa into northernmost Michigan, uh, north and west of the low. And then as we go through the day, one of the things I'm going to be watching for, as far as the Northeast is concerned, is that there's some uh, downpours and thunderstorms that develop around mid-morning that move through upstate New York. And sometimes when you have something like this happening away, uh, ahead of the main cold front, it, it, can, it can zap out uh, some of the energy in the atmosphere, essentially. Uh, and by the time the dynamics get there, they have much less to work on. It, it could be what the NAM is showing here for... Uh, late Wednesday into Wednesday night, that maybe the, the dynamics are not quite going to be there because of the fact that uh, you've got this lead area uh, happening first. But I, I just want to be really cautious here because uh, the, the models sometimes don't handle the development of convective uh, breakouts well. Uh, they show them in some spots now, but they're really, uh, they wind up being 
uh, developing in a different sort of way when we actually get to the time frame. So uh, I, at this point, I would say that you know, we just still have to consider the risk. Once that goes by, we've got this weak system coming down across the Great Lakes. <clears throat> Very small, by the way. I mean, it's really just tiny. But uh, it does have, uh, you notice the twisting here. There's like a little comma there. That's a tight little upper air disturbance that's moving through, and it takes the low just over or just south of New York City and actually produces a narrow band of accumulating snow here for Friday afternoon into Friday evening. Now, how real this is, I'm not sure, but I want to just jump to, uh, let me put the snowfall because it's very tight what it does, and I'll get a um, get the tight view so we can see just how tight it is, but it actually produces a little stripe of six inch plus snows in northeast New Jersey, I'm sorry, northeast Pennsylvania, uh, up into Sullivan County, uh, western Orange County, and uh, on up into northwest New Jersey, this purplish area, that's that's uh, four, five, six inch snow amounts, three inch amounts into uh, Rockland, uh, west, uh, northern Westchester, uh, on up uh, into Connecticut along and just south and either side of Route 84. So uh, pretty interesting here what it does, and it actually even brings down a coating to an inch down to about uh, Route 78 uh, and across Long Island. So you know what? Who knows? This is so tight and so small. If it's a little further south, uh, that stripe of accumulating snows could be uh, could wind up lying right across northern New Jersey, New York City, and Long Island uh, to about Route 78. If it's if it's a little further north, then you know the outcome. Everything will be north of 84, but it's just a very, very tight, small little system. And this is how the NAM handles it. And we'll switch to the GFS. I haven't even seen it yet. And I think the GFS actually has it the other way. So let's see what the GFS does. This is why it's very, you know, we're getting to the time of year now. Where it gets very hard to get worked up over this sort of stuff. Um, but, yeah, you know, the GFS, which for days has been showing a well-defined low, uh, has now kind of joined the idea with the European and the Canadian where, you know, there's a bit of a low center here, probably uh, in, in, in central Maryland uh, with an area of snow that goes by over and just to the south of New York City. But it's light precip. You know what? I, I can't get too worked up about on this uh, from a standpoint of snow. I just can't. Not at this, this stage. I, you know, I'll wait till Thursday to figure this one out uh, because, uh, you know, the NAM implies a very tight, upper air disturbance moving through that actually generates uh, what looks like almost convective snow. And then you have the GFS, which just has this sort of smooth weakening weather system and, and finally has woken up and, and joined the other models uh, with regards to uh, what's going to be happening going forward. So let's uh, take a look at the broader picture um, because we've got uh, much happening here with that storm that see, develops near the Great Lakes. and uh, one low kind of runs out ahead, uh, main low sort of hangs back here for Wednesday. We get into what could be some severe weather. It looks like if it's going to happen, it may be, wind up happening uh, after uh, 5 or 6 p.m. And, and into the early morning hours based on uh, where the front is going to be because it doesn't really move through here until about midnight or so. And then colder air behind it. Here's that disturbance dropping south from the Great Lakes with that cold air. Makes a little open wave east of the New Jersey coast that eventually winds up intensifying and moving out. We have cold weather for the weekend before the next warm front, and you can see it here, and that's uh, coming in for um, Sunday night into Monday, but there's not much with this. Uh, we've got action going on in the Pacific Northwest uh, in that we have another weather system coming in. Uh, this one actually drops some rain and snow down into central California, so uh, this one has a little bit of punch to it. And I want to take a look at the upper air. Doing a lot of this today for the first time, looking at it with you. Um, so I, I, I'm getting my initial impressions um, at the same time. It's a nice, tight little, nice upper air system here that's going on. Why don't we widen out? You know, one of the problems with the long range, by the way, and this is something that is now showing up. The GFS has been terrible with this. Uh, because it's been showing it to be much colder than reality. Uh, we have this block, okay? There's no question that we have this block that's up here. But the problem is that we also have a deep trough that runs from 
north from the pole, really, almost, you know, from the polar region straight down along the West Coast that just does not want to get out of the way. And as a result, what this was what this block winds up doing is that it effectively holds the ridge from building up too strong in the east. So it doesn't we don't get into a blowtorch. Uh, pattern that lasts for days and days and days. Instead, we just wind up warming up ahead of storm systems that go to the Great Lakes, and then it gets colder behind it for a day or two, and then it's going to warm up again. I mean, that really is how the long range is going to play out with this because of the fact that we cannot get rid of this trough in the West, no matter what we do. Uh, actually, there's not much we do do. We just watch what the models do. But no matter what happens, um, this mess in the West is still there and again the blocking is fine but not with a trough that's out on the western part of the united states and and, and the gfs continually tries to make the troughing more important in the east and bringing in more ridging in the west but reality says that as we get deeper into these long range periods as we get closer and closer to the reality of it all it just doesn't happen um, last night's model runs again want to push some troughing into these but the other issue too by the way is at this point we're almost to St. Patrick's Day, okay? Uh, the uh, 16th day on the GFS is now March 16th. So we're almost in the middle of the month. So, you know, my view is after Mar the, after St. Patrick's Day, the chances for, for snow in the east of any significance goes down fairly rapidly, and you really have to have a perfect setup. So, you know, I was count thinking that there might be that window in the first part of the month that isn't even playing out because of the fact that we've got this troughing in the West. So, you know, I, I think, I think from the standpoint for you winter weather lovers, um, you know, they, they all the uh, saying about the fact that the, uh, the opera is never over until the fat lady sings. Well, you know what? She's uh, walked out of her dressing room. She's cleared her throat and uh, she's uh, just waiting. She's waiting for her cue to walk on stage and start, uh, you know, her aria. So, it's it may be all but done. We'll have to see what happens on on Friday with this uh, weather system that's that's moving on through. So just to review uh, again from the Storm Prediction Center, we've got the enhanced risk of severe weather uh, across uh, much of the Middle Mississippi Valley today and into the Ohio Valley, uh, also uh, you know, extending over into Western Pennsylvania and into West Virginia. That's through um, <clears throat> that's through valid until uh, 7 a.m. On, th on Wednesday, and then <clears throat> for Wednesday, we have this large area that covers almost the entire east of, eastern part of the United States, east of the Mississippi, this large area of uh, where a risk, we have a risk of severe weather, and a very large area of slight risk uh, that has been extended northward uh, from yesterday's forecast. So uh, now covering all of New Jersey to New York City, uh, into the Catskills, all of Pennsylvania, just about most of Ohio, and extending southward from there, enhanced risk in in this band from West uh, Virginia uh, down into uh, northeastern Mississippi and Alabama. So uh, keep your eye to the sky over the next couple of days, depending on which area you live in, uh, as uh, the severe weather is going to be a, 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 an issue again. We'll see soon enough whether it winds up being of the magnitude that we just had on Saturday or if it winds up being a little less or a little bit more. Um, just going to have to wait for the short range and see what the radars produce and what the uh, HRRR model does for us. In fact, you know, before we say goodbye, let's look at the HRRR and take a look and see what it's doing. And this is very, very short range, so we're only going to be looking at, um, you know, through the middle of tonight. So for those of you who aren't familiar with the uh, rapid refresh uh, HRRR model, um, it is out every hour, okay? So every hour there's a new run of models of, of HRRR models, and it goes out only about 18 hours into the future. So it's an ultra short range model. And there's the, the downpours for tonight. They seem to want to be concentrated from New, new York City uh, and Route 78 uh, southward. Looks like some heavy rains moving through southern New Jersey. I think there probably will be some thunderstorms embedded in that first band. And here's the uh, area to the west, like a two two pretty solid lines, actually three or even four. Here's one, here's two, here's three, here's four, and then there's even a little one here. So five, uh, you know, broken blotches or broken lines of thunderstorms 
uh, during the overnight that are going to be potentially severe. So um, this is going to be interesting to see how it plays. I'm sure the Storm Prediction Center will be putting up all sorts of watches uh, at some point uh, later today and for tonight. So uh, be sure to check with your local National Weather Service office with regards to uh, whatever watches and warnings are up for your area. Uh, if you're uh, new to my YouTube channel, welcome. Please subscribe. It's absolutely free and you get notified every time a new video goes up, which is usually once a day, except in storm situations where it might be uh, more than once a day. And uh, download my app, subscribe to my forecast for 99 cents on my weather concierge. Um, the uh, link will come up at the top of the screen here and their specific forecast for New York, New Jersey, New York City, New Jersey, Long Island, Connecticut, Hudson Valley, and Eastern Pennsylvania. It's just a buck a month. Uh, you, get a for you get forecasts updated twice a day and you get me. You don't get some computer generated icons. Latest posts coming up on the website, so you can check those out at meteorologistjoechoffee.com and specifically for Long Island. You can check out those posts on weatherlongisland.com. Have a great day.